Okay, so I wanted to uh, show students that didn't know already how to use some of the technology tools that we have and uh, in, a, in a few videos. And here's one video on StatCrunch. So this is from the Chapter 7 quiz. I'm using an example that I think is one that most people would want to know. And it's uh, asking you to use the given information to find the number of degrees of freedom, to find the critical values, and they're, they're indicating already, although they don't really have to indicate that based on the information, we should know what, what we're looking for that uh, they want to know the critical values for the left tail of the chi-square and the right tail of the chi-square and the confidence interval estimate of sigma and by the fact that they said a confidence interval estimate of sigma we would have already known that we were going to be using chi-square distribution and that we were going to need the left and right tail test because it's a confidence interval which you always you know you use the two tails um, so it's it's interesting they could have just said the critical values and left this other segment of the sentence out um, and then we use degrees of freedom for the t distribution and the uh, chi square distribution and we don't use it for the normal distribution so you know they didn't even need to say that find the degrees of freedom they could have just put df down here we would have known we would have need that because we're doing a confidence interval about sigma Okay, is it reasonable to assume that the simple random sample has been selected from a population with a normal distribution? That's the last part of the question. All right, so they say nicotine, menthol cigarettes, they want you to find a 99% confidence. That again indicates, because they're giving you a confidence level, that you're trying to find a confidence interval, because you wouldn't be given a confidence level if you weren't trying to find a confidence interval. So they probably could have just said an estimate of sigma and left out even the confidence <clears throat> interval statement. Anyway, the sample size is 20 and the sample standard deviation is 0.26. Now since it's got a sample standard deviation we know already that we wouldn't be able to use the normal distribution because when we use the normal distribution it's when we know sigma. Sigma being the um, parent population but if we knew sigma it wouldn't really be all that necessary to find a confidence interval around it. So Anyways, little highlights I'm trying to point out that you should be uh, recognizing too as you do these homework problems uh, that, you know, it, based on the information that's given, there's we're going to be drawn down into only one distribution and we're going to be drawn down into only one, you know, method of finding the, the pieces we need. Uh, sorry, yeah, method is probably the right word to use. <clears throat> There'll be different technologies we can use, but... All right, degrees of freedom, that is easy for all our um, cases so far. We're just using the degrees of freedom of n minus 1. And since there were 20, then we use 19 here. Um, finding the, the uh, left tail chi-square critical value or right tail chi-square critical value can be done with the table. And this is the exact same table that you would find if you were, if you were using the foldout. So let me show you that. <clears throat> so the foldout, which uh, breaks everything up, in fact we're going to need these pieces right here from chapter 7, uh, breaks everything up into chapters, also has tables down at the bottom. So this is that big foldout in the middle of your book. And down at the bottom they got the chi-square distribution. You run down the left column here for the degrees of freedom. Ours would be 19, so we'll run across this row of 19. And then remember that the chi-square distribution is different from the z distribution in the sense, well, in several senses, it's not symmetric for small sample sizes but um, and some other things. But this also, they, they display them differently. They display this as uh, area to the right instead of area from the left, like on the t distribution. So um, that that's something you should pay attention to. So if we're finding a 95 percent, 99, okay, 99 percent level of confidence, then that means that our complement to that, alpha, is 1 percent, 0 0.01. And so um, we're going to split that up into two tails. So that, that means we're going to go 0.995 from the right to get the left tail test and 0 0.005 and that's splitting up the 1%. So we're going to use values of 6.84, uh, 844, and 38.582. Now remember that in the 
um, standard distribution, we also use different critical values. We use the critical values that go um, to two decimal places. And that is supposed to help us to differentiate all these different distributions and the different scores we're using. Now in this case, these are critical values. You can tell for obvious reasons that they're not probabilities, 38.582. But uh, we would have we would have rounded to four decimal places if we were finding area scores, and area scores um, you would remember would start with zero point something because those are probabilities. So another way to differentiate because of the rounding rules that we use. So pay close attention to all those rounding rules. Um, anyhow, so let's see here. Um, I've got the critical values, and that's one way to do it. I wanted to show you some stat crunch, and uh, incidentally, I, I am speaking fast, but that's okay because you can pause and rewind and watch segments over again. Okay, if I'm going to use stat crunch, um, I go to stat, and I uh, go down here to the calculator. I've got lots of calculators. Here's the uh, t distribution, student t. Here is the normal distribution where we get those z z values and here's chi-square you see here it's not symmetric we're using the degrees of freedom of 10 we want ours to be 19 because our sample size was 20 now here's how it works so it's it's set up this is one thing cool about this the uh, stat crunch chi-square calculator is you can go from left or right so I, I can do a left area or I can do a right area <coughs> um, now what you need to do is you need to put in the critical value if you wanted to find the corresponding area or probability because remember there's a correlation or if you don't know the critical value you can put in the probability so I'm going to put in 0 0.005 since we wanted a 99 percent confidence level and we're going to split that into two that means alpha over two would be 0 0.005 and hit compute and it's going to tell me that point that 6.8 Four, four, as you see when you round, it's going to tell me that one. Now, remember on the chart, this might seem a little weird, but I'm going to point this out to you. Remember that on the chart, we looked it up under the column for 0.995 and came down here to the um, degree of freedom of 19, right? That was our 6.844. Um, the reason why this one I didn't put in 0.995 is because I was using left area. In the stat crunch I calculators, I can choose left area or right area. Now, if I wanted to choose right area, <clears throat> I would have been needing to indicate 0.995% probability from the left. I'd, I'd need to indicate that. And remember, that's what it means when it says that it, it's using area to the right. Um, let's go ahead and stay on area to the right just to indicate how this will match. Let's put in, and I'm going to match this 5% tail area to the right just a little bit over here and see where I'll end up when my degree of freedom is 19 because I'm not changing the degree of freedom in my so let's cut that off and put in that much area and I get that 38.582 uh, which is uh, our matching 38.582 critical value on the right so cool thing and I, I, I kind of just like to stay with left area. That's another reason I like to use chi-square. I, I think one way for all the distributions. I just think left area every time. But the, the table here is a little different. All right, so um, that was uh, how to use stat crunch. Okay, you go, as a quick reminder, if you're finding critical values, you go stat, you choose calculator, and then you choose which one you want, T, um, normal, or chi-square and then you fill in the appropriate information <clears throat> it's nice too because it gives you a picture as you do it unlike um, some of the other tools unlike the table for example unlike the calculator calculator you can get pictures for some of the distributions now it's just finding the confidence interval so technically we would be uh, going to our formulas and getting these upper and lower bounds for the confidence interval about the variance, about uh, sigma squared. And then what we would do is we'd square root all three of these components 
and we would find the confidence interval about sigma. So, because <clears throat> see, this is a confidence interval about sigma. So I could do that, P plug all those pieces in, but I don't want to. I want to show you guys how to use StatCrunch to do all this at, uh, pretty much all at once. So I'm going to go back to StatCrunch. I'm going to go stat, and instead of going to a calculator and finding the individual probabilities or um, cutoff values or critical values, I'm going to go to um, variance. Okay, and this is one thing that I like more about StatCrunch than I like StatDisk because it, you have to think by distribution first, and you don't just put in um, by by uh, by test first or method first. So I'm not just putting in confidence interval and then picking the appropriate things after that. That's I for me that's a drawback to StatDisk. StatDisk is easier to use, but it doesn't cause you to think in the right way. It doesn't cause you to think like like you should be thinking when the data is delivered to you and you're trying to decide what kind of a test you're going to do. So I have to first think, um, what am I dealing with? I'm dealing with variance, and then I'm going to be using chi-square. So I'm doing a one sample, and I don't actually have the data, do I? They just told me some summary information about the 20 um, items that were sampled. So I, I put with summary. So I went stat, variance, and then with summary. Now I know you might be thinking for a second here, um, Mr. Burrell, you're going to be finding out the wrong thing because we're supposed to be finding out sigma, not variance, which is sigma squared. I know, but we can square root and, and get that piece. So what we've got to put in here is variance. Now the problem is, is we don't have the variance stated directly, but it's not that big of a deal to just find that out. Here's our, and we could probably even do it in our head for some people. Um, here's our 0.26 milligrams, and we're going to just square that. And then nice thing about this is I'm using just the you know computer calculator, so I can control C since I've got the, the value there, or I can hit it again. And then control V and just paste it in. Okay, the sample size was 20, so it will know to subtract one for the degrees of freedom. And then I hit next. Don't hit calculate yet, because if you calculate by default, it's going to go to hypothesis test, and and it's going to use other things you might not want to use. So you hit next, okay, and change the default to confidence interval. This is where you find confidence interval for variance. We're going to change it to a 99% confidence level. Hit next. And normally, I don't really care to store the data in the output table, but I'm going to because I want to show you how to use that. So I'm going to hit store data to output table, and instead of giving me a new window right here altogether, it's going to go back to that page and put all that information in. Okay, and I could do it again and and have the separate window show up, but here it is. Here I've got all the win um, all the information, and so um, I will find the uh, upper and lower bounds for the standard deviation. Because you got to remember that this is the um, lower and upper bounds of the uh, of the confidence interval around the sample around the population variance, not standard deviation. All right, so here's how you do it. Then you hit uh, data, transform the data, and here's the manipulations we want to make. Um, I want to select the lower bound first, so I just went to y let let the y value be lower bound, and um, I said let's take the square root of y. I'll hit set the expression. So I, I just chose lower limit, the function I want to use. They've got some predefined most common functions here. Hit the expression and then it pops up. Uh, compute that. It'll shove it in there for you. There's your square root of the lower bound. Good, thank you. And then data transform this way you can keep everything all in one nice place and avoid um, typos, you know, because when you're transferring from a paper to a computer to a calculator, there's more room for user error. And we want to avoid that. Okay, there's our um, square root of our lower limit, square root of our upper limit, which as you think about it, you'll realize that's the 
same thing is fine in the confidence interval about the standard deviation because that would be taking square root of all these components which is the confidence interval about the variance all right let's put plug them in and see if we're right <clears throat> um, I think I can actually click on these and hit control C I haven't tried this but I'm trying to now oh look at that I can another way to save myself from user error Okay, but I do have to round to two decimals, so we're going to have to bring these down. Don't just truncate them, actually round them. So that's a two, which will make it just a one eight, eighteen hundredths. And that's a two. Wait a minute, something didn't copy. <laughs> okay, uh, let me just type this one in. Hmm. Funny. Talked about avoiding user error. I almost had some. All right, now, to, and I can't, it's not a homework question, so I can't just submit it because it's a quiz question. <laughs> but I can click this thing show completed problem. Let's see if they match up. See that? I matched up. Now they rounded this to 0 0.2 and 0 0.48. That's probably because they were using these um, lower levels of accuracy, but we would have been still been right because we use the technology which sometimes is a little more accurate. All right, good. So, I will pause the video here and remind you that uh, there is a way to do to use StatCrunch to do some of these problems. If I can stop it.